All right, well, I'm changing my timing belt on the 3-4 dual overhead cam V6. And for other owners of this engine, I'm sure you've heard that it's a nightmare to work on this and crap like that, and it's not. It's really easy. Of course, if your belt's broken or your timing's off, you can't do it the shortcut way. But it's really easy. This right here is all you have to take off to get the timing belt. You have to take the coolant reservoir off, uh, the power steering pump, and you should drain that before you take it off or you'll get that fluid everywhere. Obviously the serpentine belt, this little shock brace, and the top cam covers and the side cam cover. And then once you take that off, um, and you should get it to top dead center before you do any of that. I don't know if you can see down there, but there's a notch on the crankshaft dampener, and there's a little arrow on the block, and see how it's lined up? And on this pulley, that mark is on the top, but you should ignore all the marks on the belt pulleys themselves because they can be wrong. But as long as that little crankshaft slot lines up with the arrow and the block right in front of it, it's a top dead center and that way when you pull the belt off the cams won't move or anything because the valves should all be closed and then once you have it at top dead center just uh, mark the belt and one of the cam teeth it does not matter where as long as it, you know exactly which one it is mark all four cams and then mark the bottom one and then when you get your new belt all you have to do is transfer over the markings and line them back up and when you put it back on the timing will have been just like it was only with a new belt and I took the idlers and the tensioner off too here's the old parts because these wear out and I didn't want to put a new belt on and one of those wear out and chew up a new belt and there's the marks on the belt there's two of them there's the one from the crank, and then there's the two others. And I just transferred it across in case it got wiped off or anything. So I'm going to get the marks transferred from the old belt to the new belt, get these idlers and actuator put on, and should be good. Oh, and this uh, tensioner. Uh, I'll grab that real quick. Alright, here's the hydraulic tensioner it's actually very easy to get out this little plate is in front of it with these two bolts all you do is you take the two bolts out you take this plate off and then this just pulls right out it wasn't even under pressure I was trying to push the actuator off of it and stuff but it doesn't really have any tension on it so once you take those two bolts out once you take all this stuff off you take those these two bolts out and that brace and then this pulls right out and then how you get it to stay closed there's a screw in there and you pull these little rubber plugs out and then there's a screw in there you turn that all the way in and when you turn that screw it'll pull that in and then the plug covering that you put a paper clip or a needle or something in it and it'll hold it in there and then once you get the new belt in marked and stuff and you're ready for it to be tensioned, you just pull that out and it pulls tension back onto the belt and you're good to go. Alright, I got the new belt on and uh, one thing, I was wrong about all the valves being closed. The back two banks are halfway open or so and when you go to put the belt on, if you pull on them at all, they will lash a little bit. So, and I also forgot that uh, I put a mark on the cam carriers too. I don't know if you can see that. I went ahead and crossed it up along the cam cog so that I could know where they were. So yeah, I marked the pulleys, the belt, and where they were at just so that I could have a reference point. Except for that one because I knew the bottom one wouldn't turn. But yeah, here it is. Got the two idler pulleys and the tensioner on. New belt. All the marks lined up took me a couple minutes because these kept moving but I finally got it and you should try and have most of your slack by the tensioner if you can see the little bit of slack that I have left is back here that way you can still get this on and I couldn't find a paper clip so I just used a 
key ring, one of the smaller key rings. I straightened it out. I turned that in and put that in there. There it is. Alright, well, I didn't have the actuator in far enough. Just wanted to show this is what it looks like when it's all the way retracted. I thought that where it was would have been good, but I could not get it in there. So that's what it looks like all the way retracted. And it has to be that far. And then it slides up into here. Almost got it. It just sits in a little recess back there. It's like a cutout. Then you have to get it onto that tensioner rounded out part. Just a second. Alright, after using both hands, I got it. I don't know if you can see it back there, but it's in, and all I gotta do is pull out the uh, little keychain or keyring binder, whatever it is. I might have to use a pair of pliers. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put that bracket on and use a pair of pliers to pull that key ring thing out. Well, I got it. Here's the little key ring that I pulled out. Just used a pair of pliers and yanked it out. Now, it's under tension. And the timing's lined up. That's the short and easy way of changing the timing on one of these engines. You didn't have to take the valve cover, the intake, or anything off, or order any special tools. You just need a paint marker and a toolkit. And uh, these, to take these off, which if you're not changing them, you don't have to have it. You need a T50 Torx, but that's about the only specialty tool, and a paper clip or whatever for that tensioner. But yep, that's it. Everything else is just putting on that plastic cover and these covers, power steering pump, filling it up with fluid, and then connecting these wires that I took off because they were in my way, and then that coolant reservoir, and that's it. It's done. I'll probably start it and make sure that it runs right with everything off like this. Well, there she is. Got a little bit of lifter take. She's been sitting for a couple weeks. But, it wouldn't be running if the timing was off. That's it. It's already starting to quiet down. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and shut her off because i got no water pump or anything right now. But That's it. That's done. Got everything back together, and now that it warmed up, no lifter tick. Perfect. I even put the little sticker that the belt came with on here. That way, if it wipes off, I can see that I need to change it there. Yeah. Not bad. I'd say the timing's right. That's how to change the timing belt, short and sweet. <laughs>